When working with Microsoft Forms, there are multiple question types to choose from. Today, we're gonna to talk about using the ranking question type. What this does is it allows you to create a question and give the responder up to 10 choices. They will then take those choices and rank them in order from most to least important to them. I think this can be a good question type to use over multiple choice in certain scenarios. So let's take a look at an example of how I would use the ranking question type. In this scenario, I'm trying to decide what webinars to create this year. I get a lot of ideas sent to me, but I'm just one person and can only create and teach so many webinars per year. So I'm gonna create a survey with the most popular topics and let my coworkers tell me which ones they are most interested in. If this is your first time creating a form, you should know that there are two options. If you select new form, this is a personal form that is tied to you and your OneDrive account. You will be the only person who has access to it. You can always share it with people later, but that's a different video. Then you have the option to create a group form and tie it to a specific group or team that you belong to. This is typically the best option if the information you are gathering is applicable to multiple people. So for this scenario, I am going to create my new form under the M365 webinars group. Now that we're in group forms, I'm going to select new group form. So let's start building our form. Now I could make this a multiple choice question, but here's what happens. I put in all the different options and tell people they can select as many choices as they want. What I end up with is several people saying, I want to learn about all the topics. And then I have no idea of which one is the most important. So when I click add new, I'm gonna click the drop down and select ranking instead of leaving the default, which is a multiple choice option. One important thing to know is that when you create a ranking question, you can only have 10 choices. This is a limitation imposed by Microsoft and from what I can learn, they are not planning on changing the limit. The form starts with the ability to enter three blank options. Simply click in the first field and type in your information. You can use the tab key or click add an option to get to the additional fields and keep going until you've entered all your options or reach the 10 option limit. In this example, I've entered all 10 options and here you can see that at the bottom, you no longer have the button for add an option. Now that we have created our first question, I'm going to switch to a form that's completed so that you can get an idea of what it looks like. This form is intentionally an example with only ranking questions. In the first question, there were 10 applications to choose from, so now I have given people an additional 10 choices per application to help narrow down what should be included in the webinar. One thing I will point out is as I'm previewing this form, if I notice I put a question out of order, I can select the question and drag and drop them into different orders. Before you send your form out, you can customize it a little bit more by going to the upper right hand corner and selecting theme. Forms is offering you a few design choices based on the words you put in the title. Right next to theme is the preview button so that we can take a look at what the form is going to look like to the people we send it to and give it a trial run and answer the questions ourselves. When you first see the choices, all the questions are in the default order that the form author created. Now, as the responder, you can go in and drag and drop all the options into your preferred order and notice that the numbers are changing as I'm dragging all these options around. If you don't wanna drag and drop, you can always click the arrow up or arrow down key to change the order of the choices. As you can see, this process would be repeated for all the questions until done, but I won't make you watch all of that. Let's fast forward and I'm going to submit a sample form so that we can look at the results page. To do that, all I have to do is click the back button to exit preview mode. And because I am the forum author, I'm right back in the original form. Then I will click the responses tab where you have a few options of how you want to view these responses. View results will pull up the responses individually for one person at a time. You can open the file in Excel, or you can look at the charts right here on the screen. The options are going to display in the original order that the form author created, but as you hover over each one of them, you will start seeing percentages. So notice here that Teams seems to be the number one choice. Of course, this is very simple data because I only responded three times in order to give us something to look at. 
But if we look at this team's question and hover over the different options, you can see that 66% made meetings as their second choice, but first choice for 33% seems to be creating a team. And I could go over all of these statistics until I decide what should be included in my webinar. But at this point, you've probably seen enough to know that you now have some information to know what is most important to the set of people you sent the survey to. If you are interested in learning more about Microsoft applications, check out the video on the screen and I'll see you in the next video.